God is looking for our faith and belief to conquer our situations. So, I'd want to encourage you to not only look for and listen to God's voice, but also to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, since there is a decision to be made when it comes to your salvation. There is a way that must be taken. The broad or narrow road, the route of holiness, where you carry your cross and forsake the delights of this world, or the world's way. It's time for you to figure out how to save yourself. It's time to make a choice. Will you take the small route, where only a few choose to travel, the road where you follow Jesus Christ, or the big road, where you have complete control? The road where it's all about you and what you want. It's all about your feelings in your way. You decide. The pleasures of this world or the discipline of righteousness. The pursuit of money, power, material things or the pursuit of godliness. You decide. In fact, you decide how to spend your time and what you get involved in. Does it glorify God? Does it increase your faith? Does it challenge you to walk right in the sight of God? Work out your salvation, saints. You have the choice to be diligent in prayer, in reading God's word, and in developing your inner spirit man. It's all up to you. You are making decisions every second of your life. A choice on whether or not to put God first. You must decide whether or not you will focus on God's word on a daily basis. A decision to believe and say, whatever the obstacles in my path, I will trust God for a solution. Despite my difficulties, I will continue to adore the Lord. Despite the fact that I am under pressure, God is still wonderful. These are all decisions you must make in this life, but the most significant decision you must make is whether or not you will be saved. You cannot serve two masters at once. You cannot serve the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of darkness at the same time. There is no one foot in and one foot out with this decision, and for your salvation, you have to make a decision. You have to decide that it is eternal life that you want, and there is only one who is the way, the truth, and the life. And that one is Jesus Christ. I haven't always been saved, if I'm being honest and speaking from the heart. I wasn't always the excellent, strong Christian that others may have assumed I was. I'll confess that I'm having trouble. Is it true that I love my neighbors as much as I love myself? Because it's difficult, I don't do it all of the time. It's difficult to give the other person the benefit of the doubt. It's difficult to be a peacemaker when others put you to the test. It's difficult to love all of your neighbors because, quite simply, it's impossible. Not everyone is pleasant to be around. It's not simple to love everyone, and you know what else is difficult? In a society where there are so many shiny distractions, it's difficult to live a life focused on Christ, but here's what I want you to know, have I found it difficult to live right? Yes. Have I struggled with finding the discipline to pray on a daily basis? Yes. Has there been a day that went by when I didn't open my Bible? Of course. But here's what I found. As I reflected on my walk with God, I realized that the reason for my struggles, the fact that I've been so relied on my own strength has caused me to have such a difficult time. I've attempted to accomplish things on my own, but being at peace with all men would be difficult for me alone especially when people wrong me, but if I ask for grace and allow the Holy Spirit to work freely inside me, I can overcome. I have the ability to let go of things. I'm not going to be concerned by minor annoyances. 
It's difficult to live a life focused on Christ in a world that provides so many glittering attractions on my own. It's difficult to live a life focused on Christ in a world that offers so many glittery distractions. But if I pray for strength, if I admit my shortcomings, then his grace is sufficient for me. God's power is made perfect in my weakness. By myself, I just have too many limitations. I have emotions that mislead me. I have feelings that tempt me. I have thoughts that cloud my judgment. This is why you shouldn't try and rely on your own power and might. If we try to achieve things on our own, we will all fall short at some point. So, like me, you may be in a position where you're battling to perform God's work. To live righteously, to live a life agreeable to God, I would advise you to begin relying on God's strength, for you will never be able to defeat the devil on your own. You'll need the strength. The miraculous working power contained in Jesus' blood. Because the Bible states, but you will receive strength when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you need the Holy Spirit's power. Jesus said that because he knew, he knew that we would find it difficult to face life with our own strength. We're limited in our wisdom, in our knowledge, so we need the power and might that comes will receive the Holy Ghost. Hear me when I say that we can and we should live by the power, that's in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 9, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So what this implies for us is that when things get tough, when things become difficult, and we feel weak, we should draw on the power, which is in the name of Jesus, the name above all names. Everyone wants God to answer their prayers, yet it appears that we only believe in the power of prayer when we say so. When it comes to our own personal lives and difficulties, however, we frequently lack the confidence to trust that God would respond. For us to feel the actual force of God's will, we must overcome the barriers of doubt and fear. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, a woman named Hannah pleaded with God for a son, promising to give him back to the Lord. Hannah was in a tough place, a barren second wife who was ridiculed and humiliated by others who easily had children. And in her season of difficulty, she prayed. We have to remember to remain faithful in prayer during difficult times, because God is our source of strength, and if you are not grounded in prayer, where will you get the strength to endure? So praying is a must. 